We're all out and about. about. Hitting the wards. Have you got a question for me? With our ouch bleepers. Ready to answer your medical queries. That is a lovely question. Nothing to see here. Just three doctors waiting for their bleepers to go. Off. They've got off. Out of the way. The first question is from Will. How are you, Will? Well, poorly. I'm in hospital. Oh, uh, yeah. Keep up, Zand. So what was your question? If two people of the same leg length would have a race, why would one be faster? What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds to me like a case of, I want to know why two people with the same leg length might run at different speeds. Itis! Yeah. There are lots of things that determine how fast you run. And in fact, leg length isn't even that important. It's about muscle strength, how hard your heart can beat, whether it can get enough blood around you, and maybe most importantly, why you're running in the first place. If I told you to go for a run right now, you might not run very fast. But I tell you what, if Dr Chris walked in here and did his smelliest fart, we'd both be running as fast as we could. Yeah. Great. Question answered. What? You do the stinky fart, Zand. Quick ronks to the next question. It's from Javen, who has achondroplasia and is having treatment to make his bones grow. Javen! I hear you've got a question for me. Why do people snore? What's the diagnosis, Doc? That sounds like a case of, why do people snore itis? Well, I don't snore, but you should hear Chris. Why have you asked me that question? Because I snore. Do you really? <sighs> the tissues in the back of your throats, which are your tonsils, which are there, and your adenoids, which are there, relax. So when you take a deep breath in, the air rubs against those tissues and that's how the noise is generated. Well, you deserve a sticker for that. Thank you. No worries. You need to get a move on, Chris, because Ebony wants to pick your brains. Why is your brain soft, Dr Chris? My brain's not soft. My brain is perfectly good, thank you. No, I mean everyone's brain's soft. Oh, I see. Why is everyone's brain soft? Yes. <clears throat> <laughs> What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds to me, Ebony, like you have a severe case of I want to know why your brain is soft, Dr Chris. No, in fact, I want to know why everyone's brain is soft-itis. <laughs> Got it in one, Chris. You're absolutely right. Brains are one of the softest organs in the body. And the reason I know that is partly because I'm a doctor, but also because I've eaten brain. <laughs> Not, not human brains, animal brains. Now, the reason your brain is soft is because it's surrounded by the bones of your skull, some of the strongest bones in the body, and then it's cushioned by a layer of cerebrospinal fluid that protects it. And that's why it doesn't need to be anything other than soft and squidgy. Did I answer your question? Yes, Dr Chris. Great. Well, you have earned yourself an Operation Ouch sticker to stick on your brain. That's all for today. Clinic closed. Ouch! Well, look at that, Chris. A lovely green kidney. All it needs now is a little more green paint. Sand, you've got a huge splat of green paint on my blue heart. Well, I think it looks much better now. Everything's improved with a little more green. That's not true. But I have got a good trick that will make you confuse your green and your blue. Ooh! It's Dr Chris's world-famous how to confuse your colours trick. What we're going to do is divide you into two groups, one group with me and one group with Zand, and we're going to show you this list of words. It's called the Stroop Test, and what you'll notice is that while some of these words are written in the correct colour, purple, green and blue, some of them aren't. So that one is the word green in the colour blue. I want you to go through the list of words and you call out the colour of the word as fast as you can. OK, so for this one, you'd say purple, green, blue, pink. Yellow, green. Whoa, 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 who said... Yeah, whoa, 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 I heard a few people say red. Remember, this lot need to name the colour, not the word, and they mustn't pause or hesitate. Try it yourself. The words on the screen are the same as on our chart. Are you ready? Quick as you can, go. Red, grey, grey, purple, yellow, yellow, red. <laughs> yellow, green, red, brown. <laughs> purple, green, blue, pink, red, and... No, nope. that's not red, that's green. <laughs> purple, green, blue, pink, red, grey, blue, green, green, red, blue, purple... No! Nope. <laughs> Who found this test difficult? 
So did I manage to confuse all of your brains and get you to say the wrong colour? Yeah. 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 So who knows how the test works? Ruben. Your brain processes the words quicker than it knows the colours. Pretty good, actually. That is a pretty good explanation. So because we're asking you to describe the colour, the information about the word that's written down is processed faster by your brain, and so that gets to the bit of your brain that's going to make your mouth do the speaking faster than the colour information, and it interferes with it. So if you don't slow down, you'll say the wrong colour. So who thinks that was a cool body trick? Yeah! Your body is amazing, but sometimes it needs help. All over the UK, there are special teams of professionals trained to tackle medical mysteries. We use our eyes all the time to see the world around us, so when something goes wrong and you can't see properly, it can be quite scary. But don't worry. Whatever your eye issue, there are special types of doctors on hand to help you see more clearly. Chris, I think you'd better find out some more. I'm on it, Zand. I'm in the ophthalmology department, and this is where you'll find ophthalmologists, strabismologists, orthoptists, optometrists, and ophthalmic nurses. Now, you don't have to be able to pronounce all that, but you should know that they all work as a team here, so that if you have a problem with your eyes, they can diagnose it and help to fix it. This is Maureen Mitchell, head orthoptist, and it's her job to help fix people's eyes. Can you explain to me what an orthoptist is? An orthoptist is part of the eye clinic, and orthoptics deals with what we call disorders of binocular vision. And that means, obviously, most of us, our eyes move together and try and create the same picture. But if one eye has a problem with it, mm -hmm. then it won't be seeing the same thing as the other. And that's the whole basis behind it. So a common thing that you might see is a, is a child where one eye is pointing in a different direction to the other, yeah. and rather than have double vision, mm. the brain will just turn off one eye. Your eyes work like a camera. Light passes through the lens to the back of the eye called the retina. But because your lens is curved and light is straight, the image gets turned upside down. It's then transported to your brain through the optic nerve, where it's flipped the right way up again. Your brain combines these signals from each eye together to create a 3D image. But when these signals aren't working properly, you can get what's called a lazy eye. Having a lazy eye is actually really common. Around 1 in 40 children will have one at some point. And the main way of treating a lazy eye is using glasses and sometimes a patch. And you put the patch over the good eye, which forces the lazy eye to do a bit more work. Hello, Cassidy. Five-year-old Cassidy has had a lazy eye since she was one. Well done. She's had glasses and patches to treat it and has come in today to see Maureen for a check on her progress. So, should we see how clever this eye is and how clever this one is? Yeah? Can I just put a little cover over one eye just for a minute? Maureen does some quick tests to check if Cassidy is using both her eyes equally. I like your glasses, Cassidy. Can you look hard and tell me what this shape is here? Apple. Clever girl. And what's this one? Spring. Wonderful. Well done! The strength of Cassidy's right eye acts as a guide for Maureen to determine whether her lazy left eye has got any stronger. Oops, an eating then. <laughs> so is there a mummy giraffe? Yeah. And is there a baby giraffe? Yeah. And can you see the baby giraffe's eyelashes? Yeah. OK. The difference between the two eyes now is negligible, so Cassidy hasn't got a lazy eye now. She's fine. That's great news. We've seen how orthoptists can use glasses to fix the vision in a lazy eye. But if you have an eye problem, there are loads of other eye specialists out there who can help you too. <coughs> We're both ouch and about. I'm hitting the wards with my ouch bleeper. Have you got a question for me? Uh... And I'm hitting the streets to answer your medical mysteries. At the hospital, Zahn's busily playing tennis. I'm about to beat Dr Chris's record. 97, 98, 99... Oh, no, a bleep! Ah! You'll never beat my record. 
Get to your first call. It's from Mohammed, who was rushed to hospital after he fell onto some railings. Hi, Mohammed. How are you? Good. Now, have you got a question for me? How does my windpipe work? What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds to me like a case of, I'm Mohammed and I want to know how my windpipe works itis. That's a mouthful. The medical name for your windpipe is your trachea and it runs from the back of your throat down and splits in half and goes into each of your two lungs. Now, the windpipe has one very important job. It has to not collapse. So your windpipe is made up of a tough stuff called collagen with cartilage rings, and the cartilage rings keep it open and stop it collapsing. So even if you squeeze your throat a little bit, you can't collapse your windpipe, so you've always got air going into your body. But you did more than push on it, didn't you, Mohammed? I mean, you actually jabbed a hole in it with a fence. It hit my throat, under my throat, then I had a small hole. Now, what kind of ambulance did you get? I did get an ambulance. I got a helicopter. You got a helicopter? Yeah. Do you know what they did in hospital then? Stitched me. And so now the hole's mended. You've got a bit of a plaster on there. Yeah. And how are you feeling? A little bit good. Well, you have done a brilliant job and you have earned an Operation Ouch sticker. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Meanwhile, I'm out and about on the street. Dr Chris, I've got a question for you. Why does the brain work and how, why do we have thoughts? How does the brain work and why do we have thoughts? That might be the hardest question it's possible to ask anyone. What your brain does is it's a way of taking in information from all your senses, so from your eyes and your ears and your skin and your mouth, and then your brain decides what to do with that information and controls your body. But why do we have thoughts? No one knows the answer to. So to answer that question, you are going to have to become a cognitive neuroscientist. Do you think you could do that? Yes, I'll try. You'll try. Good for you. Here you go. Back with Zand, another call's come in. It's from Kate Lou and Ella, who are visiting their sister in hospital. Hi, Kate Lou. Hi, Ella. How are you doing? Good. Have you got questions for me? How come I've got a bigger mouth than my sister? What's your question? How come I've got X man and my sister hasn't? What's the diagnosis, Doc? Sounds to me like a case of I want to know why I've got a bigger mouth than my sister and my sister wants to know why she's got X man. I don't like this. Now that's a record. Let's start with your big mouth. Show me how big your mouth is. Wow, that is a big mouth. So everyone has different sized mouths and most of that is about your genes. Everyone gets a slightly different combination of your genes, but even Dr. Chris and I, who have the same genes, we should be the same in everything. Actually, one of us would have a slightly bigger mouth. I just don't know which. Okay, eczema. Why have you got eczema and your sister doesn't? Well, some bits of eczema are genetic, but you don't have all the same genes as your sister. You've got a few different ones. But also, everyone grows up in a slightly different way. So all the other things in the environment that cause eczema, like which germs you're exposed to and what things live on your body, they'll all be a little bit different from your sister as well. Have I answered your questions? Yeah. You have both earned Operation Ouch stickers. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Job done for today. Clinic closed. We're both Ouch and About. I'm hitting the wards with my ouch bleeper. Matt can be really serious. And I'm hitting the streets to answer your medical mysteries. Awesome! Chris has had his first call. It's from Grace, who's had a heart operation. <laughs> Hold on a second. Grace, there you are. I got your bleep. What's the question? What is my pacemaker for? What's the diagnosis, Doc? So it sounds to me like you have a case of, I want to know what my pacemaker is for itis. We need your finger on the pulse for this one. You've had recent heart surgery, is that true? Yeah. Can you show us the little scar that you've got? And the pacemaker in your heart is damaged, isn't it? Yeah. It's called the pacemaker because it makes the pace of the heart. It's what sends an electrical signal, a bit like a clock, telling the heart when to beat. Because your heart's lost its natural pacemaker, you've been fitted with an external pulse generator. So this sends an electrical pulse through these four blue wires, and these are going inside Grace's body, inside her heart, and they send an electrical signal telling it when to beat. It's pretty cool, isn't it? This isn't very convenient, so what some very clever engineers have done is shrunk this down to something even smaller than my bleeper. So the doctors will do another operation to put a tiny version under Grace's skin. Just about here at the front of her shoulder. I think you have earned a sticker. There we go. It was a pleasure answering your questions. I'll see you soon, OK? Bye.
<laughs> Meanwhile, I'm out on the street and picking up the pace to answer your questions. Dr Zan. Hello. Um, why are fizzy drinks so bad for you? The reason that fizzy drinks are bad for you is because a lot of them contain a lot of sugar and fizzy drinks don't make you full. So if you drink a fizzy drink, you get loads of sugar, loads of calories, but you still feel hungry and then you'll go and eat a big load of fish and chips and that can make you put on weight and that isn't healthy. But there are fizzy drinks that don't have sugar in and those are fine. And the good thing about fizzy drinks is they really make you burp. <laughs> Will, can you burp that well? Yes. <laughs> what a roaring success. That deserves a sticker. Back in hospital, I've got another call. Right, where is he? It's from James, who's had a kidney operation. James, I got here as quick as I could. Apparently, you've got a question for me. Why did my kidney get blocked? Why did your kidney get blocked? That is a tough question. Did the doctors use any words that might give me a clue? They said they had the stricture. What's the diagnosis, Doc? So it sounds to me, James, like you have a case of I want to know why my kidneys got blocked and then the doctor said that I had a strictureitis. <laughs> it's a tongue twister. You had a thing called a ureteropelvic stricture. Can you say that? No. I mean, nor could I, really. So, James, you've got two kidneys. They're at your back, either side, and out of those kidneys come tubes called ureters that drain urine from the kidneys into the bladder. When the bladder's full, that's when you need to go for a wee. But on your left side, that tube got blocked because it had a thing called a stricture, which is a tightening in the tube that drains the urine from the bladder. And when that got blocked, your kidney swelled up and was really, really painful. So what did the doctors do? Operation. They gave you an operation. So the doctors put a tube inside the ureter to keep it open, and that little tube's called a stent. And now the urine can drain freely from the ureter into the bladder, and you're not in pain anymore, are you? No. You're all better. So, James, would you like a sticker? Yes. There you go. Great to see you. Bye. Bye. Job done for today. Clinic closed. <laughs>